A very fluid situation, of course, but I suppose we should talk about us first, RT International. Um, your reaction to the uh, news that uh, the proposal is that it's taken off air in Europe? Well, that's very sad because uh, this was one of the few channels that uh, Russia had to express its views and provide an alternative, one of many alternatives that are needed, to the party line that we heard from von der Leyen and we've heard from Washington. Uh, the public then is deprived of thinking matter. But the, I'm more concerned about the placing of the uh, Russian uh, nuclear and other strategic assets on full alert, because this takes us to the level of uh, danger that we experienced in 1962 in the midst of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm. This is not an unprecedented act for these, mis for these systems to be activated, but it is a very worrisome uh, development because it puts the fate in, of the in world... In practice, what does it actually mean? It actually means that our leaders or our pretended leaders uh, in Europe and in Washington have, no, have collective amnesia. Um, either that or they never studied history. Because uh, as in the States, every December 7th is celebrated as Pearl Harbor Day and everyone uh, weeps for the losses and forgets entirely how and why Pearl Harbor came about. It came about from circumstances not so very different from what we're seeing today. In It was the result of economic boycott and economic uh, pain inflicted on Japan, which became intolerable, so that an economic war became a kinetic war. We are at that point today. And I think that it's time that people opened their books of history and looked how one becomes the other. Biden said uh, yesterday that he is imposing these economic pains on Russia to avoid World War III. Mm. But as he's proceeding, he is about to cause World War III. And he should pay attention. If he has any advisors, advisors who know something about history. Now, obviously, Mr. Blinken is not one of those advisors, uh, but there are, fortunately, in Washington, one or two who know something about the way the world works. And Mr. Burns, the head of the CIA, is one of them. It would be well, very helpful if he stepped in. Well, of course, the position is the White House says Russia is reacting to a, a threat that um, doesn't exist. Why does Russia feel so threatened by NATO's expansion, though, over the last uh, few decades? Well, I'm sorry, this discussion is, is for the children's sandbox. <laughs> you don't, uh, either you understand how the world works or you believe in, um, in virtual worlds, which is unfortunately what most of American elites are engaged in. They don't want to face the world as it is. And the world as it is, NATO is an offensive bloc that is kept together by hatred for Russia. It would lose its raison d'etre if it should make any accommodation with, with Russia and, and, and create a new security architecture for Europe. Hmm. These are the sad facts. And so I can't go, go into a long explanation. There's no need for it. Either you understand that white is white and black is black, or you don't want to, to face the facts. There are talks uh, hoped to happen tonight on the uh, Belarus border. The Russian delegations go in there. It's still in Belarus. What hope for any breakthrough, or is it too early? We'll see. Uh, I think it's improbable. Mr. Zelensky himself is reported to have said that he doesn't expect these to succeed. And if anyone knows, he should know. But of course, it's preferable they talk than they not talk. However, this under no circumstances should hold up the denazification program, which the Russians have. Uh, and as their present uh, objective and which is guiding their military actions on, U on Ukrainian territory. OK, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, political analyst Gilbert Doctorow, thank you.